Hello everyone, my name is Husni al Sadi, and today I will be talking about statins with a focus on Crestor or Rosuvastatin calcium. So this is just an outline of the topics I will be handling today. Um, I will introduce statins, I will give you Crestor facts, I will then talk about cholesterol, its structure, and its synthesis, as well as the mechanism of action of statins and how they bind to the target, their side effects, um, and a conclusion. So I'm going to introduce statins. Statins are a, they comprise, a, they make up a class of drugs that lower cholesterol in our bloodstream. Um, they are one of the top selling classes of drugs in the U.S. Um, in the 1970s, the first statin was discovered by a Japanese biochemist named Akira Endo. Um, who was working at Sankyo companies, um, pharmaceutical companies, he found compactin, which is what he called that statin. He found it while studying a fungus called Penicillium citrinum. Um, everyone was excited at the time to test it. And uh, however, during preclinical trials, the drug was shown to be toxic on animals. And so it never reached clinical trials. Um, afterwards, Lovastatin came after, um, which is a drug that was discovered by Merck, and it also was also discovered um, after studying a fungus. Um, so Merck signed a confidentiality statement with Sankyo companies to look at the experimental data, and uh, then they went on to find Lovastatin. Um, it actually got FDA approved in 1987. So it's the first statin to be FDA approved. There are two types of statins, type 1 statins, which are made from fungal metabolites. Um, they're basically, they resemble the natural product. Um, they are known for their bicyclic declin ring. And this is the bicyclic declin ring. Um, notice the stereochemistry here. All of these are stereogenic centers. And I want you to notice this because I will talk about type 2 statins, which are synthetic drugs. Um, however, although they have a larger structure, it's not shown here, but Crestor is actually a type 2 statin, so you'll, you'll see its structure later on. Although it has a larger structure, they're easier to make because there's no ring stereochemistry. They don't have that stereochemistry that is found in the type 1 statins. Um, all right, Crestor. So this is a structure, actually. <clears throat> Notice the difference here. Um, so Crestor is prescribed for high cholesterol and triglycerides. And if you want to be fancy and say hypercholesterolemia and triglyceridemia, then go ahead. Uh, um, it was developed by AstraZeneca Pharmaceuticals. Um, it was FDA approved in 2003, and the patent expired last year in 2016. Crestor, or rosuvastatin is the most potent statin in, on the market. Um, and this, this is because... But, you know, potency is um, basically just a measure of the constant, what concentration uh, gives, a, gives us the effect that we are looking for. So low concentrations of it actually give a very good effect. Uh, the company, as you can imagine, made billions of dollars in annual sales. Um, Crestor is taken orally in these doses, 5 mix, 10 mix, 20, and 40. It has an IC50 value of 5 nanomolar. Um, and I, the IC50 value is just the concentr concentration of the drug when 50% of the targets are inhibited. Um, and the lower, the better. This is actually, uh, Rosova statin has the lowest IC50 out of all of the statins. And uh, it just shows how effective it is. Lipinski's rule of five, it just shows if a drug can be taken orally or not. And you can see that um, Crestor fulfills all of these rules. Um, it should be less than 10 bond, hydrogen bond acceptors, less than 5 hydrogen bond donors, a molecular weight that's less than 500 grams per mole, and a log p-value that is less than 5. Um, just a quick thing. So it's called the Lipinski's Rule of 5. It's not 5 rules, just multiples uh, of 5. Also, it's just a rule of thumb. So it doesn't need to always be right. Just wanted to say that. Cholesterol, it's an amphipathic um, compound. We have a hydrophobic part and a hydrophilic part. Notice this hydrophobic part. We have four rings, A, B, C, and D. And we have this tail that is attached at the end here to the D ring. And this tail, it literally just 
increases the hydrophobicity of cholesterol. Cholesterol is a very important um, compound in our body as it's a precursor for steroid hormones such as estrogen and testosterone. It is important for bile salts which are, which, uh, are a main constituent for bile acids that are important for fat digestion and absorption in the small intestines. It is a precursor for vitamin D, which is important for body for bone health. Um, and it is found in plasma membranes to maintain uh, their fluidity. So is cholesterol bad? Well, no, um, it's not bad if it's within the normal range. Um, however, if it's not, then yes, it can be bad. So cholesterol is made up, it's made in the liver, and it starts as VLDL or very low density lipoprotein. Um, and then, so v very low density lipoprotein gets acted on by an enzyme called lipoprotein lipase. Triglycerides are taken up. So the VLDL structure contains cholesterol and triglycerides. Um, as the lipoprotein uh, and uh, lipase acts on it, it takes out the triglycerides. And so we get IDL or intermediate density lipoprotein which is also, it has lower triglycerides, the same amount of cholesterol. Triglycerides get taken out again by the enzyme, and then we are left with low-density lipoprotein. We just show, it shows that we have um, a low amount of lipoprotein as compared to the high amount of cholesterol within the structure. And LDL is actually the bad cholesterol. This is what doctors look at when they're looking at uh, the different tests they look at the LDL levels. High LDL levels um, can cause plaques, which are here plaques is just a buildup of cholesterol, fats, and calcium on the arteries uh, walls, and so they narrow they they narrow the arteries and they make make it harder for blood to go through, and you can imagine this can actually cause um, heart problems um, if this thing ruptures. It's gonna cause a blood clot that's gonna block nutrients and oxygen from reaching the heart, and so it can cause a heart attack. Same in the brain, it's gonna cause a stroke. Atherosclerosis is just the condition at which the narrowing happens. Heart disease is the leading cause of death in the US and worldwide. This is what makes statins very important. Cholesterol biosynthetic pathway. So it's important for me to talk about the cholesterol biosynthetic pathway before talking about statins and their mechanism of action. Um, it consists of 30 steps. Now, I will not be talking about all 30 steps because it's going to take me a long time. However, the most important part of it is in uh, the first two steps. So three molecules of acetyl-CoA, they come together to, to make up uh, HMG-CoA or 3-hydroxy-3-methylglutyl-CoEnzyme uh, A. This then get uh, catalyzed by an enzyme called HMG-CoA reductase, which, which is shown here. So the reduction of HMG-CoA is catalyzed by this enzyme to make mevalinate and then we get the coa part as a leaving group so this is the mechanism at which everything happens so within the enzyme we have amino acid residues and these amino acid residues they serve in stabilizing the uh, hmg coa and in they serve in a mechanism so here we have um, a hydrogen bond you know it's serving it's stabilizing it we get a hydride that's second that is attacking the carbon and then if we go here, what we're going to see, we're still having the hydrogen bond interaction, but we're also having an ionic interaction by the lysine 691 residue. We here, we get a, the, a hydrogen from the histidine 866, and uh, we kick out the CoA part as a leaving group. We get mevalidehyde. So this is the first part. And then we have a second part with another NADPH. So basically, I told you that the HMG-CoA reductase it catalyzes the reduction of HMG-CoA by NADPH. So again, another hydride ion. It works with different amino acid residues till we get mevalinate. And mevalinate undergoes then there are subsequent reactions that take place to make cholesterol. So the Crestor target. Crestor, as well as the other statins, they target the enzyme, the HMG-CoA reductase, and they're called HMG-CoA reductase inhibitors because they are competitive inhibitors that compete with the natural substrate or with natural substrate, which is HMG-CoA. They compete with it. Once they bind to the enzyme, they prevent any natural substrate from binding and therefore no cholesterol will be produced. Um, it is going to cause a slower production of LDL and VLDL by the liver. 
<clears throat> the liver will also increase the transcription of the LDL receptor gene. And this is because the liver wants to capture as, as many LDL um, uh, low-density lipoproteins and VLDLs as possible to maintain the homeostasis of cholesterol within the liver. Um, as you can imagine, we're going to get an increased HDL. So I didn't talk about HDL. HDL is the healthy. Think about it as the healthy uh, part. So we have HDL high density lipoprotein. So we have a larger amount of lipoprotein than cholesterol. So we have low cholesterol and HDL actually serves, it carries the cholesterol from the tissues to the liver. And when we have high HDL levels, it's gonna start acting on the plaques. Remember the plaques are what cause the narrowing in the arteries. If it starts acting on plaques and taking the cholesterol out, what we're gonna get is, um, uh, a decreased risk for heart disease. So binding of statins. Statins bind to the HMG CoA reductase. They bind more strongly and they do not undergo an enzyme catalyzed reaction. So why is that? It's because statins have an extra hydrophobic region. This hydrophobic region, they it, it causes a, uh, an additional interaction as opposed to the uh, natural substrate and so a stronger one. Um, and then they don't undergo an enzyme catalyzed reaction because they do not have the CoA part. There's no leaving group. They only have a hydrophobic group. So no leaving group, no catalyzed reaction. The hydrophobic part of statins, as I said, uh, as I, okay, actually, I didn't say that yet. Um, so as you can imagine, we have, so we have a polar group in the natural substrate and we have that polar group in the statins as well. This polar group in both um, structures, it's gonna bind to the enzyme at the same uh, region. However, you'd think that the hydrophobic group here um, would bind at this to the same region within the enzyme as the CoA. And this is not right actually, because the uh, pocket, the hydrophobic pocket within the enzyme that binds CoA is actually too narrow. And so uh, this shows this is going to show the remarkable flexibility of the enzyme because statins can actually bind that hydrophobic group. Once the statins go in and bind, um, a hydrophobic pocket opens up that actually allows another hydrophobic pocket, not the same one, and it allows for the binding of statins, for the binding of the hydrophobic group. Um, Brosova statin, I said it's the most potent um, statin. Um, it's also it has a unique interaction between the cell phone group and an arginine 568 residue. So this actually, that's why it's the most strongly uh, bound statin to the enzyme itself. It also has a serine, there's a serine residue within the enzyme that acts as an H donor to the cell phone oxygen in rosuvastatin, unlike the other statins, except for atorvastatin, which has a similar um, interaction. Um, Crestor or rosuvastatin has a half-life of 19 hours. Okay, side effects. So the side effects of statins include fever, increased thirst, nausea, loss of appetite, and the main one I want you to focus uh, on is muscle pain. So muscle pain is not really well understood. However, coenzyme Q10 is uh, linked to it. So when we are blocking that cholesterol biosynthetic pathway, remember how we're blocking it in the beginning. However, Coenzyme Q10, which is important for energy production in the muscles, is thought to be produced um, as a result of later on uh, of later on products within the biosynthetic pathway. So since we're blocking that pathway in the beginning, then we're not producing coenzyme Q10, and the muscles cannot use energy. And so we they, the muscles get fatigued, and thus we get muscle pain. Conclusion, the statins have saved millions of lives so far. Um, they are safe to use, as the side effects are not really adverse side effects. Crestor, I said it, it's the most potent statin. And it's okay. I actually forget, forgot to talk about this. So it is, uh, it's not as hydrophobic, which means that it's actually specific to liver cells. So the lower the hydrophobicity of it, the more specific it is to liver cells. Um, think of the larger picture. It's time to change our diets and our level of our of our act of activity. Although uh, cholesterol is bad, however. High cholesterol levels are linked to diet, and so we got to change the diet, start exercising people. Thank you very much.
and I hope this was helpful.